All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for attending our webinar today. My name is Stephanie, and I'm the business developer for the character animation segment here in North and South America. I am joined by Chris Adamson. He's our product specialist here in our office in L.A. Uh, may the 4th be with you all. Uh, so I think a lot of you probably caught a glimpse of our technology at uh, GDC just a few weeks ago, and, and we were happy to show off some of our NBN capabilities there. But today, we'll have the opportunity to go into a little bit more detail and show a little bit more intimately the features of our systems, as well as provide an overview of our software, uh, what it can do, and how it can fit into a uh, pipeline directly into either Maya, Motion Builder, Unity, uh, as well as Unreal using the iKinema suite as well. I'm just making sure everybody can see the screen right now. All right, awesome. Sweet. All right, so many of you might have some interest in incorporating motion capture into your design process uh, simply because we are, you know, many of you from G GDC were assuming games, but of course it could be used for anything from film to virtual reality uh, to visual effects. Uh, but, you know, whether it be for animation or cinematic rendering or even to enhance a gaming or a VR experience, our systems can be a very valuable tool for either of these applications. So today we'll take some time to walk you through some of those pipelines um, and we'll talk about how it can enhance your workflow. Uh, of course, aside from its technical benefits, the major advantage to using our systems is that it gives control back to you, the designer. And what we mean by that is that, you know, the versatility of inertial motion capture prevents you from having to rely on scheduling some studio space or relying on a technical operator. Um, and it allows you to capture right then and there when you need it and where you need it. So, of course, things like fight scenes, background animation, or even sport or athletic movements, they can be set up really easily and captured in minutes in any environment. So. Many of you might be familiar with this clip here. Um, this is the Hellblade um, GDC presentation that was made by Epic. Uh, so if you didn't have a chance to catch it, there is a video of this on YouTube if uh, you wanna go and search Hellblade BTS or behind the scenes. But it really does serve as a gold standard for what is possible with live real-time motion capture. Um, we were really honored that Epic recognized our hardware as the ideal choice for this type of application because of its reliability and its robustness and also because of its ability to capture the character's nuances and characteristics in real time. And that's really how they brought their character to life. So later we'll show uh, how this was done using the iKinema live action suite and Unreal, which is what Epic used for this presentation. But before I get into that, I just want to introduce you a little bit to us as a company. Um, Xsense is actually founded in, uh, it was founded in 2000, but it's actually based in the Netherlands. So while Chris and I do operate out of the US office here in Los Angeles, uh, we are based in the Netherlands. We consist of about 70 employees or so. Um, and as of 2014, uh, we were acquired by Fairchild Semiconductor. Uh, this is an important point because it has backed us and allow us, it has allowed us to make uh, significant developments, especially in our recent generation of hardware. So that's just a good chunk of our team here. We recently celebrated our 15 year anniversary. So while the technology might seem new to many of you, we've actually been in this for quite some time. We've been working at this technology for about 15 years. We do have presence worldwide uh, with some distributors around the globe. Uh, Chris and I, as we said, we do sales and support for the Americas region specifically. So that does mean if you do eventually acquire a system, you would be dealing with us for any uh, support matters. All right, so I'm gonna go into the sensors a little bit and what really makes us unique. Our sensors themselves, there's 17 across both our systems, the Awinda and the Link. We call those trackers. But within the trackers, there's three sensors. There's a gyroscope, an accelerometer, and a magnetometer. This is what makes it an inertial system. It's combining all three of those elements. Uh, the gyroscopes are tracking the rotation. The accelerometers, you think that they're tracking just the Gs, but they're also tracking gravity, so you have one point of heading. And then it, you also have a magnetometer, which tracks magnetic north. So this way you now have 
two points of heading and then once you do a calibration all of these trackers are all talking to each other giving you full body humanoid motion capture. Now, these trackers are actually used, um, as you know them, for character animation, but they are used for other applications as well. We do have other two other segments of business, one being industrial. Uh, the trackers themselves are used for uh, detecting uh, movement, for stabilization and, and control of uh, unmanned aircrafts, vehicles, uh, moving platforms. And then on the other end, we also have it used for human motion measurement. Um, meaning for things like biomechanics, ergonomics, sports science. Uh, we do have people using the system to capture things like joint angles uh, that are important in analyzing, uh, you know, athletic movements, gait, and so forth. So these, accurate, these trackers are actually accurate enough to do these types of analysis. And while it may not necessarily be important to you as a character animation uh, specialist, it is important because it allows you to accurately capture uh, things like movements and uh, mannerisms very, very with very high fidelity as well, bringing your characters uh, to a lot more realism. All right, so the segment that I think most of you are interested in since we met most of you at GDC uh, is the character animation. Uh, in the past, we had two iterations of the suit that more focused in, you know, previs kind of animation. They weren't to that fidelity of inaccuracy that the suits are right now. Uh, but with the new iteration of the suit, we're seeing a lot of people push push it, as you saw with the Unreal Hellblade demo, with live cinematics, uh, live entertainment, training simulation, and virtual virtual reality kind of applications. Uh, XSense has been around for 15 years, so we do say we have 500 plus studios worldwide. At the bottom of the slide there, you can see some of the people who are already using our systems as their go-to mocap. Um, in the so for this iteration, some of the things we really took in mind was we needed to change the robustness of the tracker, the size of the tracker, how to put the tracker on the body, and the connection of the wireless signal. So what you see right there in this picture is actually how the tracker is built now. Most of it is just protection. Um, so what those little bars right here are actually aluminum padding so when you pull on the cable that's also Kevlar inside of this cabling it can take about 120 pounds of pressure so you don't have to really worry about breaking your trackers too much. Um, inside the tracker themselves with the gyroscopes, accelerometers, magnetometers you know we really bumped up what these were calculating which also allows us to get a new feature, height tracking, which is you know very unique to our system and an inertial system to be able to track height. It's because we are sampling so much data that we are able to do this. Um, all these trackers calculations then go into um, the receiver. Each wireless signal has a buffer rate depending on the suit you get. They can range from 10 seconds to two minutes. And then something, the most important part that really separates us from a lot of our competition is magnetic immunity, which is when you calibrate our system, it remembers that good magnetic field that you calibrated in. Then if you run across steel structures or anything that is normally gonna disrupt your magnetic field and you know cause rotations in systems, then we have solved this to a point where you can actually walk across these uh, interruptions and still get 100% of your data perfectly clean. Um, this is also a little picture of our CTO testing that Kevlar cabling I was talking about. And just to push it one more time, this whole iteration of this suit was completely based off what we heard our customers wanted. They wanted to start to have height tracking. We gave them height tracking. We wanted They wanted easy use. So putting the suit together, we completely revamped the suit with like special zippers and able to set up a system within you know under 10 minutes and then improved accuracy by really bumping up the sample rate of those gyroscopes, accelerometers, and magnetometers. 
Now we do offer two different versions of our hardware. As I mentioned earlier, we have the MVN Awinda and the MVN Link. Uh, one primary difference between the two is that the Awinda is applied with Velcro straps, as you can see with the image here. The advantage to this, of course, is that it is easily interchangeable. So if you do expect to have multiple users, multiple designers using the suit or multiple actors using the suit, um, it is really easy to interchange that. Uh, of course, it's very fast to set up as well. So we actually find that this works well for, say, animators who want to keep the, the suit handy and they just want to pull it out and quickly uh, prototype or, or test some movements. It also works very well in school. So if, for those of you who may be joining us um, who work in the education sector, we have seen great success of the use of the Awinda in the classroom. One, because it's easy to set up again and students can easily interchange it amongst one another. Now on the Awinda, each tracker is completely wireless. So they are each sending a signal. Uh, the update rate is about uh, 60 frames a second, and you have a wireless range of about 50 meters, but Chris will go into that in just a little bit. Uh, the battery life is about six and a half hours. Now, the difference between this and the link now is that the link is applied, the sensors are applied inside of a Lycra suit. So this is really helpful if you are gonna be doing really dynamic, perhaps intense movements, if you're gonna have interaction with your environment or other actors. Um, the link is great for typically what we recommend, say live shoots, if you're going to be doing things like rolling or um, again, interacting, tackling other characters, things like that. Uh, the, motion track, the motion trackers are wired in this case and they are wired to a central body pack that then transmits the signal. Um, so this does have an update rate of about 240 frames a second. It has a larger, uh, larger range and a longer battery life as well. So generally speaking, both can you be used um, you know, for production quality results. As far as the active hardware, the magnetometers, accelerometers, and the gyroscopes, they are actually the same between the two. But the consideration that you want to take when making a choice is, you know, how is the suit going to be used? Yeah, so going off that, the Awinda system and the Link system all stream into the same software. Internally, they have the same gyroscopes, accelerometers, and magnetometers. It's just how they're streaming within the software. So over at the Awinda, you have 17 wireless signals going to one hub. This is what makes it have to be at 60 frames a second. When then on the link, it's one body pack with all the trackers threaded to that. One body pack going to one access point. The access point is just a five gigahertz router. So that's why you're able to get that 240 frames a second. So that all streams into our software, MVN Studio. MVN Studio can accept up to four systems at a time, so four talent, four actors. Um, in MVN Studio, which we're gonna give a full demonstration to later on how to use the, the software, uh, you can either record and export your data as FBX, BVH, C3D, or you can live stream into what you see the slide here is, which is Maya Motion Builder and Unity, which, and then for uh, the Unreal Game Engine, you can use the iKinema plugin, which is obviously proven to work very well. Now, just a brief slide on the different hardware features. We've already touched on most of them. Um, if you have questions about this, we'd be happy to send you our specification sheet following the webinar as well. Uh, but again, some of the main points you'll see, the trackers are, the number of trackers is the same. Um, it's really a difference in, because of the way the transmission or of the signal is made wirelessly with the window or via one body pack with the link that does differ, um, that does make for a different uh, output rate. The battery life also differs between the two as well. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, get into the MVN Studio and I'll show you guys how the magic all happens. This is actually Stephanie right here. I'm gonna pull up the camera. So I'm actually sitting down here, hi. And then that's Stephanie. Um, right now she's already calibrated. Let me show you how this whole process works. First, you would open up your software. Um, you would add additional suits if you have additional, you know, talent in there. You set up your recording destination. You, you set up how you're going to record or what the name of your recording is going to be. So it'll come in test 
And then if you come up here, it's going to be minus, we're on 006 for the take. You could rename, you could change the colors, uh, you can change the update rate, you can change if you're recording full body or just lower body and upper body. You can also see the hardware settings, so you can see the battery, you can see the serial numbers. And so if you wanted, you can add additional prop trackers. This is good for like swords or tails or wings or anything like that. You can add up to four additional trackers on top of the 17 that already come with the suit. Um, there's a few other configurations you can add, like defining the X to make sure you're live streaming in a forward position, or you can add timecode, which is an LTC timecode source, so anything that's coming through the microphone jack will be picked up in our system. Alright, so how you set up the system is you would first add the body dimensions. The required ones are body height and foot size. I went ahead and measured everything on Stephanie just to make sure we're super accurate. Now, people, when they hear inertial systems in the past, they say all oh, those things drift everywhere and, you know, it's not super accurate. That's because you didn't get the right body height and foot size. <laughs> so if you were off within an inch of your foot, every time you're going to take a step, you're going to be not actually taking a proper step. So, you know, if Stephanie here started at... Zero, 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 and she walked and came back to that spot, our system will be accurate within about, if you say you walked 100 feet and came back to that zero, zero spot, it's going to drift maybe about six inches is our accuracy right now with our system. And of course, we're always improving that. So after you get the body dimensions, you then want to do a calibration. Uh, the whole calibration takes about six seconds. Might as well just show you. So right now I asked Stephanie, can you get, get in a neutral pose? She's standing in a neutral pose. Let me show you. That's a neutral pose. Okay, then I press calibrate and I press start. This is the whole calibration process where all those elements of the trackers are talking to each other. Now Stephanie is in the scene and ready to move around. That's it. That's the whole calibration process. Okay. So from here, we can record data. You know, we're recording. I press stop. A little dialog box will come up. So we're like, hey, that was a really cool idle. Awesome. Press save. And then that comment will come up where we save that file. Um, now, the bread and butter, we can show you how the streaming process works. So if I go to the options, preferences here, and I want to set up a stream, so right now it's set up for the Unreal stream. I can put in a local host and stream directly onto my computer, or I can stream across the network by putting in an IP address. Um, it's real simple. You just check the box that says Enable Stream, and then if I wanted to go from instead of a 60 frame a second stream, I could, or a 240 frame a second stream, I could put a down sample. So it's streaming every other frame. It's not going to affect the data here in MVN. It's just going to, you know, affect the data that's being streamed over into the game engine. Okay. So now if I come over here into Unreal, I already set up a scene with the iKinema plugin. How that is done is you can set up your character here within iKinema and do the retargeting process where you're going to actually drag and drop the bones into the proper spots or you can use the iKinema plugin within Maya then bring in that FBX. So right now I already have the FBX in here. I then drag in that iKinema script and then I create an animation blueprint. So I, you know, I don't know how many people have worked with Unreal much but this is the very like bare bones retarget right now. You could add, you know, foot. Uh, you, you can add different buffers, pretty much. You can add a foot contact. You can add a, a lot of different elements to make this data come across even better. But right now, it's you have the Ikinema plugin, which is this mocap stream right here, which is accepting where it's getting the stream from. So set that all up. Then you set up the uh, the retargeting with Ikinema, which is going to connect it to the 3D character itself, and then you have the 3D character. 
you press save and you compile and then your whole animation blueprints all set up now if I come in here I would just click and drag the animation blueprint and press play actually let me uh, let me show you Um, somebody asks, is there audio over the internet? There should be if you call in with your phone. All right, so now you can see the MVN puppet. Now if I press play here in iKinema, let me find it. You can see they're both streaming at the same time. And this is exactly the, plug the process that was used with the Unreal Hellblade demo. Okay. Well, that's pretty much that. There's Stephanie dancing around, and there's the suit. So that's pretty much the whole process of how MVN Studio works. I mean, you can imagine there could be more people, there could be up to four, and of course there's no cameras required, there's no cameras within this room, it's all just streaming directly those 17 trackers Stephanie's wearing streaming directly to the a Windows station sitting right next to me on a laptop. It's not even a big fancy computer I'm using right now. Yeah. So now Chris did uh, demonstrate the iKinema to Unreal plugin specifically. However, there is a live stream uh, available with MVN Studio specifically into Maya Motion Builder and Unity as well. Now this is a really straightforward process, a little bit even like, even more straightforward than the process that you just saw here. Now if you do have interest in seeing the step-by-step -step process as we did here with Unreal, just feel free to contact us, let us know, we can send you a tutorial video on how the stream works for each of those softwares as well. You want to open up the chat? <laughs> yeah, now that about concludes the visual and the audio presentation for today. We're going to open up the chat for just a little bit. This is uh, our contact information. If you do want to contact us, we'll send it into the chat as well. Uh, the way that you utilize the chat feature is basically you can type a question in the box and if you could just put send to host, those questions will come directly to us. How well do you do multiple characters work and how many before you lose fidelity? Uh, so, okay, that's a good question. We recommend if you're gonna start going past two characters to use the link system, which is that guy right there, just because that's one wireless signal to one router, you can also use one router to, to collect all four talent. Uh, it's, just, it's just less Wi-Fi going around uh, when you start having, you know, 17 times 2 is 34, you start having all those wireless signals going through the air, then you start seeing latency in the suit, which isn't good for the live playback, but the suits are still recording at 100% because we have that buffer. So it depends on the fidelity you want. For live streaming, go for the link, and it's, it's going to work really well. Um, and... You, you're not going to lose any data, per se. And then also, based on the position, if you have four characters, you're, you're really going to want to make sure that you've got good body dimensions and you know arm span if you're going to be doing high fives and things like that with, uh, these, with the proper di body dimensions. And then it goes across the whole body. If you've walked 100 feet away from each other and came back and then did a high five, then for one system it might be six inches of a drift. Hopefully that answers that question. We work with iKinema and Unreal, which versions of each software is compatible? Do you need to install plugin in the project settings? Um, yeah, so within Unreal you do need to, I, I'm on a 4.10.2 in Unreal right now. Our software 4.2, 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, 4.4, 4.5, 4.6, 4.7, 4.8, 4.9, 4.10, 4.11, 4.12, 4.13, 4.14, 4.15, 4.
So for our software, MVN Studio 4.2 and above is going to work with the Unreal plugin. And then for Unreal itself, you do have to make sure that the plugin is loaded here under animations and enable that plugin. Uh, let me scroll up real quick just to make sure I. Okay, cool. And how about facial tracking or fingers? I saw a fairly complex looking rig for the Hellblade demo. Okay, so yeah, for Hellblade, they used, uh, what's it called? So, cubic motion for the face. And then they had a remote control set up for the fingers. So within Unreal itself, they had, you know, some basic movements of the hands and somebody sitting there with a the remote and pressing X triangle, you know, if it was an Xbox remote or a PlayStation remote to move the fingers. We also have a partnership with Manus Gloves, which do a really nice finger solving. And we also have a really nice partnership with FaceWord that do facial solving. We want to focus, XN's ourselves, we want to focus in body tracking and make that perfect so, you know, that's what we're really focused another in. another glove solution is cyber glove as well mm -hmm. um, since we are capable of doing live streaming it is uh, pretty easy to do an integration essentially you have our stream uh, streaming the body motion into say I don't know unity or motion builder for example uh, then you have the facial stream coming in from your facial capture whether it be cubic motion or uh, face wear and then you would have your glove stream coming in as well yeah okay now, Lyndon, how does the signal deal with walls or obstacles and tables and props and such? Also, how about somebody going up and down? Okay, we can show you that real quick. So here's Stephanie, and in the back there, there's a little table, so she's, she can step up on that. Yeah, and you can see she's actually tracking her height. Um, so this works based on assumption of like how you're pulling across gravity or anything like that. With going up and down stairs, it's going to work perfectly fine. Or gra grabbing a you know a jungle gym and pulling yourself up and doing pull-ups and everything like that. That'll work. You can actually search uh, on YouTube XN's MythBusters, and we actually do a lot of height tracking kind of test in that video, and you can see exactly how that works. Uh, for obstacles and tables, because there's no cameras actually involved in our system, it's actually a huge benefit of our system. You can go underneath tables, you can lift up a table, you can go behind walls, and it's gonna track all of that perfectly accurately. Okay, which version of iKinema? This is the, this is the first version of iKinema. There's now a second version of iKinema. Do you need Ikenema for XNs to Maya to Unreal? No, uh, for Maya, uh, Motion Builder and Unity, we all have we have our own we have our own plugins that we provide. Just the only plugin that uses Ikenema is the Unreal plugin. Yep. Is there compatibility with Oculus? Um, this is all, so is there compatibility, compatibility with Oculus and HTC Vive, Gear VR? This is all based on what the, you know, the user is going to do with our system. We provide the live stream of the human inside of these game engines. Um, if you want to hook it up with Oculus and HTC, then that's, you know, up to the plugins and codes you get from those guys. They, and theory, yeah, everything yeah, there, should work. Yeah, we do have plenty of developers who are using um, our system in combination with, say, Glove Solutions for actual in VR experience um, use. So they essentially developed a game. Uh, one example is the Virtual Dutchman. You can find that on YouTube. Again, that's mm -hmm. the Virtual Dutchman. They've created a VR experience using our system and the Manus Glove, as well as an Oculus. And they created their experience in Unity, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but it does allow you to have feedback on your body, which is really great. I mean, that's something that's unprecedented and fairly new as of right now. Uh, to have the ability to use your hands, you um, see your arms <laughs> and legs inside of a VR experience uh, is what you know, is what our system allows you to do. But the development is required, say, in Unity, for example, and you would, you would need a platform for development, and then you would bring the data in that way. 
Yeah, so then is there any track tracking options for props and what are the educational packages? I think we'll we'll sum it up with that and then I'll I'll link our information again and then if you guys have further questions I'll I'll answer you later today for sure. Is there any tracking options for props? Yeah, so within the 17 trackers that are on Stephanie's body, with the window or the link, you can add an additional four prop trackers. So what you see with this prop tracker is it is attached to a segment. So if it's a sword, you can attach it to the left hand. It needs that because it needs to get the translation down the chain of your actual body. So if it, you know, it's not, it can't work as an individual prop, but it can work well for a sword or wings or something like that. We also see people take the prop tracker and use them on their fingers and their thumb and get a sort of claw effect with the live stream into Unreal Motion Builder Maya Unity. And that's that question. <laughs> and lastly, we have one last question that we'll address today. Um, what are the educational packages? We, we know that we do have some uh, education people with us today. Uh, we do have a really excellent uh, offer for the Awinda and our MVN Studio Pro software. Um, it is a education special price, so it is for purchases made directly by a school or university. We will email you, Javier, with the details. We can provide a, a rough quote as well. And we will email everybody who is present today uh, with a recording of today's webinar presentation as well as a special credit for future purchases just for attending with us today. Um, and that, that concludes our presentation. We thank you so much. If we didn't happen to get to your question, please uh, feel free to email us. Uh, I can answer that one. Actually, we have one more question. Yeah, okay, answer. I can answer Lyndon's question real quick. Uh, so for the reference camera, uh, we do offer LTC timecode source, which is a very universal source of doing timecode. Um, so that can actually link to your reference camera, so you get a timestamp and you get your camera and your mocap data synced very easily. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, you will receive an email with a link to the recording if you want to watch in the future. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email us. Uh, Chris linked our emails in the chat. We'll do it one more time before we close. Uh, but we hope to hear from you all soon, and have a great rest of the day.